Greetings Captains, Gunship here. Hope you are doing well. Today I'm going to do a review of the USS Des Moines. Its uh, hull number is CA-134. It was the lead ship of the class of United States heavy cruisers. She was first ship in the United States Navy to feature the auto-loading Mark 16 8-inch stroke 55 caliber gun, the first of its type in the world. She was the second ship of the US Navy to be commissioned with the name of the capital of Iowa. Des Moines. Launched in 1946, she was commissioned in 1948. She saw duty around the world onto her decommissioning in 1961. That's it for the history lesson. Now on to what you probably really want to know about. Is this a ship that you should buy and have in your line in War Thunder? And I'm going to go through this video explaining a bit about the ship. I have the Newport News as well myself, so that is a good comparison, but also going to compare it to battleships and other cruisers of similar type. So without further ado, let's get started. First, let's look at the stats cast between the Des Moines, the Newport News and the Helena. And the main thing I'm going to point out here is compared to the Newport News, the Des Moines has fantastic AA and the 76 mm, the three inch guns, are all HE VT shells when it fires. So really, really good AA, also even compared to the Helena. What you'll also say is it gets a nice big new reward of 1800% silver lines with a premium account, and also it gets a high reward in terms of research. When you look at the Newport News, bear in mind that I have a talisman on that, so that's why the reward is the same, otherwise it'll be 392 in, instead. So you get really good rewards. The repair cost, they've gone up a little bit, but you know, 6,200 silver lines is absolutely nothing. As you can see from a recent battle, I spawned first in a PT boat just to capture a point and then use the Des Moines the rest of the match. And you can see I netted just over 200,000 silver lines and 11,000 research. So this is a spreadsheet I made myself, and it basically compares some of the most interesting ships in the game. What you need to take away from it is that there's a calculation in the return of fire based on top crew skills. And there's a calculation based on how much fire you put down range if you use HE and if you use AP and SAP. I also note down the max armor concentration at close range. Ultimately, this leads to the firepower calculation, which is essentially the return of fire, the amount of penetration, and the amount of HE filler that goes down. And I take that both for the primary and secondary, and that gives you the numbers you can see in red. I also do a calculation on protection, I call it, which is essentially the armor built in millimeter times the crew. So it's just an arbitrary number, but it's useful to comparison between ships. Using the numbers you just saw, there's an easy comparison here, and I've sorted it by firepower. So we have the Kronstadt at the top, and the reason for that is simple. It got a great rate of fire, it has high penetration, and it has a large TNT filler in each of those rounds. As you go down the list, you will come down to the Des Moines. And what's interesting here is you can see that it has almost double the firepower to the USS Pittsburgh, which is also have 8-inch guns. But of course, the Pittsburgh is not auto-loading. Please take this comparison with a pinch of salt. There's many other factors that make the ships either a good ship or a little bit of a worse ship. I, for example, make no allowance for the Mikuma and its 24 torpedoes that it carries that can be absolutely devastating if they hit. But I hope you find the comparison useful nonetheless. Going into battle, I load up the Des Moines with all AP shells. And the reason for that is I have actually been close to run out of ammunition and some of the battles. For the secondaries, I just go all HE and I have a small amount of uh, VT shells as well. It does come with a radar, so you can use that against uh, planes and, and whatnot. Uh, but most of the time, the AA takes care of all the small ships and planes in the vicinity without you having to do too much yourself. In terms of actual gameplay, that's what set this ship apart. Now, you may or may not have had the opportunity to play the Newport News. If you play the Newport News, this is the same story. 
apart from you've got better AA and of course you earn more money and better desserts and yada yada. But if you haven't played the Newport News, then this is quite a unique experience. The fast firing guns are really good. It's, it's like playing a heavy cruiser, like you're playing a light cruiser, like the Helena for example, you know. Guns fires just as quick, but of course it's 8 in shells instead. Uh, it really is a good ship, and as you saw on the stats early on, if you have two or three death points, you can you can overpower you know even the the best battleships in the game for sure. And I just enjoy it. I think that's the main thing here. It just continues stream of fire, so ribble fire. You I turn off this follow your shell camera. I uh, literally just hold my mouse button down, make sure that I'm on target with the way I aim. And you can either bow tank if you want and you're taking too much damage, or you can go slightly on the side, the angle is not too bad to get the verse or the, the rear turret into action as well. And it's a continuous stream of bullet towards the target. And ships do succumb, you know, you do get good shots, do kills, and because you also have a high rate of fire, you're probably more likely also to get the final shot and i.e. get the kill of the target. And that's really useful. And I also find it's quite nice that there's a color difference between the AP shell and the HC shell, so I can sort of see when I'm landing with either the uh, primary or the secondary guns. I think it's a lovely ship to play. And when it comes down to the balance of, you know, should I avoid it like the plague? Should you consider it? Or should you just go ahead and buy it? I would say right now, with this video release, I still think there's a bit left of the summer sale with the Guardian and it's half price. That's when I bought it. And while I've only done 10 battles in it, I have really, really enjoyed playing the ship. Now, some people are nervous about, yeah, but don't you get one shot at an awful lot? And, and yes, it is susceptible to that, but all ships these days can explode just as, you know, as the whim of a hat. Um, and this is no exception. You know, you, you can be one shot at them, you know, but so what? You're in a premium shit. You know, at the end of the day, you're not going to lose any silver lines on it, so it doesn't really matter. And you can put other ships in your lineup. Uh, you know, that thing that's, you know, it's just, just a good case for playing. And I mean, I got the Helena as well, so it's like two really good ships in the same lineup. The PT boat in there. Even the USS North Dakota, throw that in for good measure, just if you want a bit of staying power. Or maybe you use a backup of one of the other ships. I mean, it's it's just a money maker in that respect. It's It's good fun to play. I enjoy it and I would thoroughly recommend it. If you can find the 30 euros or whatever to buy this ship, I mean you'll have the US Navy researched in no time if you don't already have it and you'll just find it fun and engaging to use going forward. Uh, I think it's a unique ship where it sits and, and we don't know what's coming next from Guyton, of course we don't, but I think uh, you're good for a good period of time. And uh, yeah, I hope that you, you found this little video useful. And if you did, then please give it a like and maybe subscribe. I think there's only like 5% of the people that actually watch my videos that subscribe. So it would be lovely to get that number up just a little bit. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.